in about 30 seconds or so. Uh, and people are going to sort of keep filing in. But if someone's going to quiet down, everybody should have a ballot in their hands that we're going to hear. Uh, in a couple of minutes or so, sort of further over According to that, I want to introduce the debate. Um, so, um, first of all, thank you and welcome to the CJL's annual lock on the document. It's very exciting to see you. <laughs> the lock and Hamatash debate has a long history in the world of Jewish politics in America. Each year since its founding, a small classroom at the University of Chicago in 1946, professors and students have gathered to engage in a serious academic debate aimed at proving the superiority of either latkes, eaten on Hanukkah, or Hamateshin, eaten on Pura. Though it may seem redundant to host the same debate year after year, each pairing of debaters brings unique and innovative arguments to the contest. And while each year a winner is announced, that verdict may change given one team's winning persuasion. So we'll see who it will be this year. This year's debate will be moderated by Dean of the Faculty, David Donovan, whom I will introduce briefly so he can introduce our debaters. According to Wikipedia, Dean Dobbin actually has to celebrate his birthday this year for the first time since 2008. He attended MIT and received his PhD from Harvard. Dean Dobbin taught at both Yale and the University of Arizona before joining Princeton's faculty, where he was among the first professors in the newly created computer science department. He was the chair of that department for nine years preceding his appointment to the dean of the faculty, a position he has filled since 2003. Dean Dobkin's research is in the fields of computational geometry and, com and computer graphics, which I won't dwell on since I know nothing about either of them. <laughs> Should you find yourself in a conversation with Dean Dobkin, you can engage him by inquiring about his paperweight collection, which numbered 630 nine years ago. You can also ask about his collection of pictures of people in phone booths or the sculptures he creates out of found objects. Please welcome our moderator, Dean Dobkin. Solomon, both with some flavor of Chicago roots, 
although I think neither was at the University of Chicago for the first Lashka Hamantosh in debate. Cody <coughs> is the Henry Putnam University Professor of History and a prolific scholar in the department. A word of warning to the Hamantoshin team, be really careful with footnotes around town. <laughs> and for the people in the audience, you know, inside baseball, watch out for references to the Renaissance and the Reformation early and later in his remarks. Amy is a member of the class of 2014 from Wilson College. Yeah, yeah. And a word of warning is that what I've been told is that in Quickfire Productions, she can be remarkably stunning, but don't be surprised by the 12-year-old looks because she can unleash a string of expletives. <laughs> Enough. 
Historically, it originated in the Americas. Its value was recognized and cultivated <laughs> by Native Americans. And in the wake of <coughs> European expansion, the noble plant migrated to Europe, where its high calorie to acre ratio fed the rise of population and civilization across the Atlantic and worldwide. But the potato misused has been a disaster. <laughs> a single-minded dependence in Ireland <laughs> left it exposed to fungus and famine ensued. The potato mistreated and misused, well, there's no better example of this than the potato fried in oil, the latka. What has it produced? Chemically speaking, the frying process saturates the potato in undigestible, even toxic oils, producing over the course of the 20th century all that is conducive to a new kind of clogging, heartbreaking mortality. <laughs> this graph is well known. <laughs> this graph is well known to students of epidemiology, tracking the rise of deaths from heart disease running alongside cancer, obesity, and other diseases of Western consumption, the death toll coincides with the increasing use of corn oil. <laughs> and with this unhappy marriage of oil and spud, <laughs> an evil offspring was born. The French fry, the pomme frite, the potato chip, the potato pancake, and the latka. <laughs> And as we eat more of these foods soaked in polyunsaturated fats, what ensues? Well, a 2004 study in the journal Lipid finds a link <laughs> to violence and homicide <laughs> as Western countries increase consumption of linoleic acid, uh, a main ingredient in processed uh, vegetable oils. The finding prompts one observer to quit. Corn oil may taste bad, so bad that it inspires you to violence. But its insidiousness, he notes, goes beyond flavor. Now, for a moment, compare the hamantai. <laughs> its first ingredient, the dried plug. The prune, naturally sweet yet high in fiber. Eating it acts as a shield against cancer, high blood pressure, bone loss, and the dreaded constipation. <laughs> but for those looking for a different, perhaps sweeter, tangier taste, there is, of course, the apricot filling. And then there is the seed of the poppy, the plant whose juice yields the potent narcotic opium. <laughs> we know that the seed is mostly innocuous, but it is not entirely devoid of sedative qualities. There is actually good reason to think that the poppy seed has some morphine content, although not enough to produce dramatic pharmacological effects. <laughs> Athletes, for instance, have indeed been known to test positive for heroin after merely consuming a poppy seed bagel. This is all to say that while the hamantaschen is not a controlled substance, it is addictive, <laughs> in the same way that love, or sport, or <coughs> coffee can be <coughs> Now, by contrast, the potato pancake incited, it, it incites to violence. And this is not just a theory. Historical newspaper research places it at the center, at the very center of family discord and digestive nightmares. <laughs> the year is 1945. The World War has just ended. Peace comes to a weary world, a, a, we a world weary of fighting. But a new battlefront opens in the kitchen. And what is it that threatens to tear families apart? Yep, those fried foods again. <laughs> With their difficulties of digestion and ensuing controversies over diet causing many a family tiff. A modest affair, you might think. But these same sources also document a trail of violence. As in this curious 1929 <laughs> case of a simple assault. <laughs> Bennett Norwood, age 28, asked by a judge, why, why, after breaking a tooth on a potato pancake, why did you hurl the plate at the waiter's head? Norwood smirked, and he said, 
It wasn't the plate I threw, Your Honor. It was the pancake. <laughs> Now, it's hard to see who exactly is the culprit here. <laughs> perhaps it was Norwood, but perhaps it was an incitement to violence, or even a reflexive act of self-defense. It's hard to say. The historical record does not allow us to see the truth. With such a trail of carnage and incitement to violence, who could praise the Latka? And I look at my colleagues here. Who could speak positively about this unfortunate force in human history. <laughs> Who could be an honest spokesperson speaking the truth about this stalker of human happiness? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>